What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're getting out on the John boat and fishing swim jigs. And if you want to cut straight to it, I'll leave a timestamp in the description. Otherwise, I'm going to break out a few pointers because I see if I see a lot of folks fishing these when another bait would be actually more applicable to the situation. Or maybe they're fishing it and not retrieving it and the optimal way to catch more fish. And so we're going to break everything down in today's video. Let's go ahead and get into it. So folks, I've been seeing a lot of people, they'll, they'll just throw out a swim jig, they'll cast it, they'll retrieve it uh, in open water, and uh, that is not necessarily the time or place for a swim jig. A swim jig, you really want to be working through grass. I usually use a heavy rod, straight braid to pull these fish out of the thick stuff, especially in the summer, which is why I wanted to get this video up for you guys. It's very timely. When those fish are really hiding in the grass, that is when you want to pull out something like a grass hero swim jig. And real quickly, I'm going to talk to you about when a swim bait might be a better option to throw or a spinner bait or a casting and flipping jig. What are the differences between those in a swim jig as well as chatter baits? And then we're going to get right into it. I don't want to take up much of your time. Time, but let's get a brief introduction to each of these and I'll have you on your way. So let's say the body of water I'm fishing has got like a hard edge to the grass, right? And I don't want to get into it, but I kind of want to fish parallel to it, fish that line right there. I'm probably going to throw something like a swim bait or a chatter bait, something that either looks very natural or especially for y'all pond fishermen casting in shallow water, something like a chatter bait has actually got that blade on the front. It's going to cause more vibration, draw those fish in from further away. And you can throw something like a sexy shad color if the water's a little bit stained but this is great for an area where there's more open water and you're not trying to get in the grass necessarily, right? So along those grass edges. I say that because grass gets caught on the blade and then it doesn't work properly. That's when a swim jig would be better to throw, but wait, there's more. So the swim jig itself normally has like that pointed head, right? So you can work it through the cover. And I don't mean like thick timber. These are really made for grass lakes, okay? And so when I work this bait, a lot of times I'm doing a pop retrieve as I am actually reeling which pops the skirt and gets grass off of the bait at the same time and incites more strikes out of reaction which is what you're going to get and I usually fish these on straight braid again because for one thing it doesn't really matter if the fish see the line they're not really going to see it when you just pop out of the grass right in front of them they just hit it out of reaction so braid is necessary to pull them out of the thick grass and many times it's needed so along with that kind of more pointed head than most of your other jigs it's got a lighter duty brush guard or hook guard okay this this is because you're fishing it on the run and you don't need that stout hook guard in case you're like working through trees and stuff. Oftentimes you're not with the swim jig, right? With that being said, you get a better hookup ratio, but why would you sacrifice that if you're just fishing open water? So if you're not fishing through the thick grass, oftentimes I recommend something like an exposed hook with a swim bait. That's going to be your best hookup ratio, something like a Ned Riggs Saucy Swimmer, or you can get a little jig head, expose that hook out of the top. You're going to miss less fish and even have a more realistic presentation. And so that is why I say people are throwing swim jigs when it's not necessary, right? If you're just doing a straight retrieve, use a little regular swim bait on an exposed hook, you're going to have the best hookup ratio. If I start working through some heavy timber, but I want to throw something like this, I usually go for something like the Saucy Swimmer, and we like throwing them on underspins. A little bit of a bigger presentation, I can work it through the wood, it's pretty weedless. Now spring and fall, for example, perfect times to break out something like a swim bait on an underspin, but when it gets to this extreme summer heat, you'll find those fish down low or in the thick grass, that's when you want to break out the swim jig, which takes us back to the swim jig for one last time. I oftentimes like to go half ounce because I want to be able to get down in the grass and I want to be able to work it pretty quick if I need to, right? So half ounces get that extra weight. And if I only had two colors, I'd just go with something standard like this bluegill pattern right here. And then a sexy shad for when things aren't necessarily as clear or if shad is the main forage for the bass in that lake. You'll constantly see me rigged up with a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on the back. Go ahead and put your trailer of choice, but I do recommend throwing a trailer on your swim jigs. And this has been one of the best for us catching fish on the grass hero swim jig over the years. Now, when you look at something like your typical casting jig, this has got like a more of a flat head because it's going to sit down at the bottom and allow the appendages of something more like a bandito bug, creature bait, crawl to work its magic right on the bottom. You've got that thicker or heavier weed guard now because you might be setting the hook, casting this thing through timber and all the like. Now, same thing with the flipping jig. A flipping jig typically has more of a pointed head, so it's kind of like the swim jig, but it's got a very thick weed guard because you're typically flipping reeds, flipping heavy cover, wood, things of that nature, and you need that weed guard so you don't just get caught on everything. That's where you're going to take off that swim jig yet again. The hook is nice and stout and compact on those flipping jigs, and I'd usually go with something like a new punch on the back, and that's going to get the job done, but there's a few differences between the flipping, the casting, and the swim jigs. And lastly, we're about to have y'all out on the water with us, but I just wanted to touch on the spinner bait since it's seemingly in a... Eh, 
kind of in the same category. This guy right here, tons of flash. I always throw these when it's cloudy and windy, but for sure, I'm cranking on the spinner bait whenever the water's very murky. Whenever there's not much visibility at all, I tie on the spinner bait and this thing gets bit. It will draw them in even when there's low or next to no visibility, fishing the chocolate milk. So something like a sexy shad is a great color to have on hand. And then if you're fishing some clear water, but again, it's windy, it's cloudy, it's overcast, those fish are on the move, something like that bluegill color is gonna be fantastic. And those blades just help it look like a whole school of fish swimming together that those bass are gonna target. And so that's when I throw the spinner bait. All right, and now we're headed out to go fishing, but this is very important for all of y'all watching today. We've got a discount from Carl's today's video sponsor. If you use code Weston10 at checkout, you can actually save $10 on your first purchase over at shopcarls.com. As long as it's over $25 or more, and you can grab any of the baits that we just showcased, and they will all be included with that discounted price. So let's go ahead and get out to the John boat and catch some fish. Can I get a 3.3 inch uh, green saucy swimmer when you have a second? Thank you. Swim jig. There we go. Fun working the swim jig. <laughs> nice. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> First one in the boat. Oh gosh. Let's see if we can get some more in the shallows here. Shallow flat working over to the trees. There we go. See you, bud. Oh yeah, the swim jig bite. That was awesome. Oh nice. <laughs> it was all messed up. I didn't see my <laughs> No, it was backwards, but you were just talking about. <laughs> Yeah, because I was about to lean down and fix that deeper. Jeez. It was like sticking out of the water. Distractions. That's how you do it. Whenever that slows down just a tad, he came up right behind it. <laughs> See ya. I'm excited. Like my level of my level. Especially this time of year. All right. Well, swim jig a couple days in a row has been just crushing it. Chatterbaits as well. Natural colors in this clear water. Doing it. It's fun working it too. See, I need to get better. Like doing this right here, just like you're working through grass and then poof, you feel one that like one hit that's heavier, you just bash it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's cool. So like, look, like I've been noticing it feels a little bit better for me to have the rod tip a little higher. And then if I feel one that's a little heavy, if I pull and it's heavy, then I just bah, to the side. What rod do you have that on? Uh, this is on a muscle, which is probably ideal. I don't know it if we is. have one free. Well, this is, I mean, I can just cut this chatterbait off. I mean, that's a go-to or a muscle? muscle? Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Well, I mean, that chatterbait's gonna get more fish, but this would be just like doing something different. It's kind of like popping the skirt and. Do you, do you that was as I dropped it. When I stopped fishing it, it went down lower. Yeah, this will sink faster. Yeah. Much better for going a little lower. So, yeah, number two, I believe. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> If you're like easy with the pops, it'll just kind of like come towards you, but not really like pop that skirt out. If you're like, 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 da, 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 like kind of hard against the slat, because then it like kind of pops more. I work it up. I work it straight up. And then when I get a bite, I usually set it to the side because it'll be a little bit more powerful for me. And like, you can kind of like give it a little slack on the way down and hit them. It won't be as powerful of a hook set going up. But if you feel weight when you pop it, just like smash it unless you are working it down low then you might have to assume it could be a branch also if it's like getting really close to the boat maybe i pop it to the side a couple times but you could even just swim it in without the pops when it gets close to the boat as well oh nice i think oh you had him oh i got him oh no i had him too what the heck i think my tail's gone yep tail got stolen will you throw me that saucy swimmer bag only one more Oh, it's nice. <laughs> That's the handoff catch right there. She got it going on. Wow, what's catching them? These right here. <laughs> That's so funny. You know what the bass want? The 3.3 inch naturals. Let's go. That's funny. <laughs> well, if there's anything we know about the bandito bug, <laughs> are you? Yep. Yeah. Not Pretty big? Fish of the day. Really? We haven't caught anything big today though, so that means nothing. No, it's like, <laughs> and it's gone. Oh no! Well, that's how you don't catch a new PB. Blazing <laughs> worm just falling. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you were. Well, they're right here. 
<laughs> blazing worm weightless. All you gotta do is let this thing fall slow and they're right here. You wanna use one? I just literally find this one. Yeah. No, we're good. All right, well, we're starting upsize. They're literally right under us. Oh my gosh, and I'm using in the wind a weightless worm. Let me get this thing back in the water because I have a hunch. There's some more big ones below us. I'm just not even working it. No, I like it. All right. Oh, got him. You gonna get a picture or what? <laughs> Cinematic. It's a little guy. He's head shaking like, wow, this is probably a crappie. Oh, there he goes. He's running. It's a, it's a bass. Ladies and gents, we are vibing out here. Ha, <laughs> blazing. Done like dinner. Ouch. <laughs> Not bad. Letting it fall slow. Feels like Florida. Oh, geez. Oh, well. Thanks, gloves. Got him. That might be good. I hear that drag a little bit. That's two and two seconds. We found him. Couple head shakes and then he came off. Got him. Kind of funny. Weightless blazing in, a, in conditions you would assume like everything else would be working. <laughs> I know. That blazing worm just looks too good. Skip the chatterbait, skip the spinnerbait, just uh, go for that weightless worm in overcast windy conditions, y'all. I go. I just want cool people. Oh, that's actually, what, oh, what do we have? Oh, he snapped me off. That was a good one right there. That was freaking heavy. That might've been, whoo, PB potential right there. Right off the island on a weightless worm. That thing stole that. Wow. No, it didn't move at all. Pretty sure this is like 15 pound and it felt like just open water. No, oh, that was good. That was a good one. Well. That sucked. That's one way to end the video, right? Anyways, y'all. <laughs> Sorry to make that intro a little lengthy, but I definitely wanted to go in depth. I know a lot of folks are grabbing a swim jig when really something else would be better suited to the occasion, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So make sure you're grabbing the bait that is appropriate for the scenario and do not be afraid to switch things up. I know I even threw that little curveball throw in the weightless worm there at the end on a day where things would look like only moving baits would be hitting. And I did that for a reason. You gotta adapt. Look, maybe the swim jig bite is hot one day and then you realize, okay, gotta switch things up. You gotta accommodate. If the bass are telling you one thing, you gotta listen. Otherwise, you ain't gonna be catching these things. I wish y'all a fruitful summer with the bass fishing and we'll catch y'all on the next episode if you're subscribed. Otherwise, you probably won't see them ever again. And uh, that's fine too. Peace. Oh boy, he's got us locked up. <laughs>